potentially this could be the crack in the door that is going to allow us to really break the brain's code and understand some of the really fundamental important aspects of how it is that we're able to see, to remember things, and ultimately to uh, be able to function as normal human beings. We know that the astrocyte is very important for the energy balance of the brain, for maintaining homeostasis, but what we discovered in this paper is that it may also be important for cognitive function, and in particular, for recognition memory. The story begins in the 1950s when Einstein died. Uh, Marion Diamond obtained samples of the brain and, and her goal is to see if there's any difference between Einstein's brain and our brain. And she reported that the only difference she was able to find was in the number of astrocytes. Einstein had more than the average person. Now no one took that very seriously because again, no one thought that the astrocytes played an important cognitive role. But now that uh, we can study that with modern techniques, we're beginning to appreciate that maybe that's the edge that he had on us. He had more and better astrocytes. The brain is never at rest. And the earliest recordings from the scalp, called the EEG, revealed that there were oscillations occurring at many different frequencies. You're all familiar with oscillations in the air. It's called sound. Well, it turns out there are oscillations in the brain. It's at a very low frequency below the auditory range. When you're at rest, the frequencies are low in the 10 hertz range. When you're cognitively active, the power goes up in the higher frequency range, and in particular, the gamma range, which is 30 to 80 hertz. And that's the area where we were able to show that the astrocytes could influence the power in that gamma range. Uh, it's been very difficult to study, and our results are probably the first uh, that are really pinning down the link between these gamma oscillations and a cognitive function like recognition memory. So this study couldn't have been done without collaboration between three labs here at the Salk Institute, uh, my lab, uh, Steve Heinemann's lab, and Inder Verma's, whose uh, expertise in genetics was essential for being able to create the tools that we needed to actually do the research.